Hey everybody, this is Blake here. Just so you guys know, I was sick all through last week. In fact, I'm still not feeling very well, so if I sound groggy or look grungy, that is why. But I'm going to be talking about The Dictator and Dark Shadows. Now, The Dictator, you have to remember when, I, when talking about comedy that it's either going to work on you or it won't. There's really no objective criticism to be found there. Uh, with Sasha Baron Cohen, I believe his name is out. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, though. Um, with his two, his previous two big movies were Bora and Bruno. Now, I really liked Bora. I thought it had a real creative and interesting concept. I've never seen that kind of style of humor before, at least in that context. And, uh, you know, the, the humor was very edgy, very bold and daring. Um, it was certainly a hard R, but it was just, I thought, consistently funny. And being consistently funny is something that co most comedies can't pull off. Now, with Bruno, I thought the, the funnier parts were really funny. And, I, in fact, I'd say that movie's high notes were much more impressive than Borat's. But it also had a lot more misfired jokes. At times, I thought it was just too gross, not enough funny. Um, and it had some downtime, too. So... I really liked that movie in parts and not so much in other parts. With The Dictator, it is a much more conventional comedy. For one, there's no, uh, you know, with the other two films, you know, he'd go into character as these characters and would pretty much trick these unsuspecting people into thinking, oh, this is a real person. That's where the comedy came from. This one is much more of a conventional Hollywood movie. Uh, there's a big supporting cast. Uh, there's no real attempts to be seen as real. You know that this is a character. And that's fine because I felt that the last style may have been overplayed with Bruno. And unfortunately, if there's a weakness to the dictator, it's that this the whole structure does kind of feel identical to the last two films. And um, I think that's getting a little old. In fact, you know, both of those movies had the characters go through real dark periods and... Um, to where you're supposed to feel really bad for them. With this one, I think it struggles because you never do feel bad for him, and I felt that the attempts at making him more fleshed out or sympathetic were really awkward and clumsy. It's almost like the movie felt like it had to have these scenes, and it shouldn't have. In fact, they actually play with sort of rejecting them, where you kind of wonder, yeah, this guy is nothing but an asshole, but they don't go far enough with that, so... That is where I think the movie failed the most. But I do think that it is a really funny movie. It definitely is very irreverent. There, there are, it takes no prisoners with who it wants to make fun of. Uh, some of the stuff is obviously in bad taste, but I, I laugh regardless. Like, there's this one part where he's playing a, a Wii, and he's sort of playing the equivalent of the Wii Sports, but there's, like, it's the terrorist-themed Wii Sports. And you see one of the games is the Munich Olympics, and I'm wondering, are they really going to go this far? And yeah, they do. You see them play the game where it's just you shooting a bunch of stereotype Jewish people. And um, the supporting cast is generally funny. It's always weird to see Ben Kingsley in these types of roles, even though they sh it shouldn't be that guy who will be in many crappy movies. So when he appears in some sort of real off-the-wall, tasteless comedy, I really shouldn't be that surprised, but... He, I like how, at least with him and a lot of these supporting guys, they're they're playing it straight. I think that makes it funnier. And um, this movie has a lot of fun with the fact that we know Bruce, or uh, whatever, Ben Kingsley is going to turn out to be the bad guy because he's Ben Kingsley, and the movie has a lot of fun playing with that. And um, I had a lot of laughs there. The only person I didn't really care for was Anna Faris. You know, I used to really like her when I saw her in the scary movie movies, even though they weren't especially good films. Um, I thought she was funny. I thought she did good in that she could be, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, a straight man, but also be really funny at it. I thought she was very attractive during that time. And it seems like these days she looks like a hard partier. I mean, she always looks hungover to me, uh, really pasty and odd looking. Um, even when I saw her in that last Saturday Night Live uh, where she hosted. She just looked really odd. And um, I don't think she's that funny anymore either. Whenever I w do see her in a movie, she just seems like she's trying too hard. That she knows she's in a, co in a comedy so is going to really overplay it. And uh, that does really stand out in The Dictator. You know, she, she tries too hard to be funny, I think. And it's just too much. And 
at least they do kind of make fun of the fact that, yeah, she does not look good in this movie. In fact, they even tone her looks down even more, and that's part of the character. So, I don't know. She This wasn't a good comeback for her, but she didn't hurt the movie either. Generally, this movie, I like it how, once again, the humor is very creative. It's very bold and daring. There's this one part where he's being tortured, and he's sort of making fun of the guy for sucking at torturing people. And like he says with one item, oh, that movie, or that... That device was banned in Saudi Arabia for being too safe. And uh, that kind of stuff really cracked me up. Um, Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, I think he's a really funny guy and he gets to show that here. So, all in all, if I had to compare it to the other two movies, it doesn't ever reach the greatness of Bruno or Borat, but it never reaches the lower point or never falls down hard enough like Bruno did. And with Borat, it's not going to be as, you know, it's not going to be a classic like Borat was. But at the same time, I think the hype backlash would be much more, uh, or much less severe. And um, so I'd say, yeah, you should watch it. I laughed a lot. I thought it was really funny. And, of course, you might not think it's funny. But when it comes to comedies, I do believe that the masses are usually correct. You should watch a comedy if most people seem to like it, just because you might like it. So I'd say it's definitely worth a watch as a matinee. Um, nothing higher, but you know, it's. I think it is worth watching in the theaters. Now for Dark Shadows. Now this is another. This is a more complicated movie to talk about because Tim Burton's one of those directors who he used to be really great. He was a voice of a generation and all that nonsense. But over time, like almost all of the old big directors except Martin Scorsese, they reached a point where. I don't know, his movies just became like shell, he, he became like a shell of his former self. His movies feel more like imitations of what his earlier movies were than actual Tim Burton movies. But you could still see his strengths there, so you can't completely dismiss him either. Now with Dark Shadows, it looks great, it has great cinematography, uh, pretty good music. Um, I like Johnny Depp a lot, I thought the cast does a good job with what they have to do. Um, I did think the movie was pretty funny when it wanted to be. Yeah, there are some really bad jokes near the end that are really heavy-handed and forced, but otherwise, I generally laughed. But the problem with it is that it doesn't seem to really know what it wants to be or what it wants to focus on. Now, it's going down that same sort of path the 21 Jump Street movie did, and that the 21 Jump Street, it knew that nobody could take its premise seriously, so it made a full-blown comedy out of it. Uh, with Dark Shadows, now that is also based off an old TV show, which I've never seen, but and it seems to have that same mentality. It knows that nobody's going to be able to take this seriously, so it tries to be, you know, a comedy. But the difference between Dark Shadows and Twenty One Jump Street is Dark Shadows seems to change its mind quite often. It wants to be some sort of hybrid, but it doesn't really work because it's never scary. It never really works as a horror film because the the horror sequences are more like fast paced, you know where Johnny Depp as the vampire is attacking people so quickly that they don't even really know what hit them. And that would have been okay if there was a lot more gore, and I think that's what this movie needed. Was It needed to be much more edgy. It needed to be much more edgy, uh, much more hardcore. It should have taken inspiration from Fright Night, or even the Fright Night remake. And uh, it didn't. So it, it felt really tame in comparison, but worst of all, it would just go through these segments where it's, on one hand, it's uh, a little bit more action-oriented, then it will go into more horror-oriented, then it will go more comedy-oriented, then more drama-oriented. It keeps changing its mind as to what it wants to be. It can never really make the hybrid angle work. Uh, the relationships in this movie are so underdeveloped. Half of the characters aren't even necessary. I presume they were important in, important in the old TV show, but they don't really feel relevant here. Um, Johnny Lee Miller gets it the worst. I mean, that character really did not need to be in this movie. Um, Helena Bonham Carter, whatever her name is, who plays the doctor, she also wasn't really needed. And I'm pretty sure that character was important in the old TV show. And uh, none of these relationships ever are focused on enough for them to matter. You know, the love interest gets it the worst, actually. Uh, when she's introduced, you think that she's going to pretty much be the main character and that the movie is going to be based off of her relationship with Barnabas, the vampire. But once he shows up, it seems like she vanishes. She only will occasionally reappear so we can be reminded that, yes, she is the love interest. 
But otherwise, I mean, she's just such an unnecessary addition. And she's supposed to be the most important character besides Barnabas in this whole movie. Uh, we're supposed to care about their relationship and cheer for it. But we can't. This relationship is even less developed than what you see in Twilight. Or worse, Red Riding Hood. Uh, that was a total disaster. And the same went for all the family members, all of the descendants. You know, they can't really seem to balance the screen time among everybody, so nothing feels relevant. Really, the saddest thing is the only relationship that has any kind of depth here uh, is between Barnabas and the main villain, who's played by Eva Green. And she's a lot of fun to watch, too. But that was the only connection that almost seemed to matter, and I don't think that was the point. You know, that's one relationship we're not supposed to root for. And uh, I only bring up all this stuff because this movie really does try to to be a soap opera with all these characters, but it just does not succeed. Um, yeah, as I said, I don't think it's a bad movie. You could see it has its strengths. I do like these big gothic locations. I always love Tim Burton when he's like that. But um, it just, it's such a mess in terms of script. There's a lot of stuff they introduce, but they never really explain. Like, there's this one twist in the end that I can't spoil that involves a secret among one of the characters. That's such a painful ass pull that you're just wondering, what were they thinking? So, <laughs> like I said, it had its moments. I did think some parts were funny. But I'd say it's a rental tops you know otherwise i'd say just if you see it on tv go ahead and watch it then but otherwise if you really want to see it just wait till it comes out on dvd so that is that that i did a written review of dark shadows you could read that if you go to the link in my description um check out my website i just did a written review of good guys were black which is a chuck norris movie and follow me on twitter uh i i'm pretty active there so that is that i'll see you guys later